Hi, I'm Sarah Garden from Harper's Bazaar Arabia. I'm here at Abu Dhabi Al Maria Island to chat to Prab Al Garung about fashion, feminism and plus size models. What brings you to Abu Dhabi for F1 weekend? Well, um, we have a great partnership with Etihad Airways and um, Etihad. And so they brought me here because I did the uniform for the Grid Girls for Formula One, which I'm really excited about because, you know, it's just this um, world and the game that you hear about all the time, like it's larger than life, just to be part of it and just to see it, you know. So I was excited to be here, so that's why I'm here. So I'm interested to talk to you about your early influences. Because okay. You famously started your brand during a recession, mm -hmm. which must have been super tough. Um, yeah. What made you have the desire to think, I'm just going to go for it? Yeah. You know, I've always wanted to be a fashion designer, right? And I've always wanted to kind of tell my story uh, using fashion as a platform. I was born in Singapore, grew up in Nepal and in India. That's where my family is from in Nepal. And then I lived in London and Australia briefly and I came to New York and it was just with the dream and the desire to, um, you know, have a moment or uh, perhaps make a dent in what I do creatively. Um, and perhaps if, if I may so, at the risk of sounding immodest, and I have a, maybe even a line or two in the book of history of fashion, you know. What made you decide to sort of champion plus size models? Mm -hmm. I was just bored with this one dimension of uh, beauty and the conversation that was happening in our industry. You know, um, that beauty is valid, what, whatever the conversation has been for a long time, it is a valid, but there's also, there's a huge, so many different definitions of beauty is, and, and then just to see that uh, not being represented really bothered me because our life is not filled with runway models, right? Our life is filled with different walks of women um, who have, you know, different tastes, different size, different ethnicity, different interests, and I find them all intriguing. And to see our industry, which has like the one of the biggest influence in how conversation can change, we are still not doing anything. So I just, I was like, you know, um, and I was at a panel where, uh, and, and you know, we we're having this conversation about diversity and this woman raised her hand and asked the question about, oh, what about plus size? And one of the panelists said, oh, we'll get to you. You know, and it really bothered me that I was not able to sit there and just say, listen, I've got to you already. I could not, it bothered me that I couldn't turn around and say, I'm doing it. Sometimes the way that you talk about fashion, mm -hmm. um, saying things like that maybe like European fashion weeks can be quite catty uh -huh. and things like that, obviously that makes <laughs> you hugely popular mm -hmm. with consumers and with real women. How about inside the industry? Does that sometimes make you a bit unpopular? I'm sure, I'm sure it does, but you know, it's not like, you know, when I call out people, I don't normally, you know, I never, here's the thing, whenever I start, make a statement or something, it's never done with the idea of like, you know, creating a headline or with a greed, where, with hate. It's never is. I've always been leading with love. I can't just sit here and pretend, it. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's true. When I know it's not true, mm -hmm. when I know the change has just been even maybe five percentage, where it should be 90, you know? And so, it, the kind of person that I am, I am, I just can't allow myself to just like keep quiet when, you know, what they're saying about, especially about representation, diversity and inclusivity is completely off track. But you know, it's not the first time, you know, I was the most unpopular guy because, the, because I was in, back home when I was in an all boys boarding school, I was this unpopular kid because I was just not one of them, you know. So I've been through that. I knew then, then that I lived my life with utmost honesty, even in school. That's how I do it now. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But I know that overall, it's been nothing but great. And you know, a handful of people who don't agree with me, that's fine, it's their opinion. They can stick to doing what they want to do. You know, that idea, the notion that they have to use a certain size of a model that have been traditionally on the runway um, and they have to keep on doing that. So at the, with the fear of like, you know, it might ruin the brand is a very archaic way of thinking. It seems funny to me that sometimes there's news stories claiming a backlash to some of the runway shows that you've done, for example, sending feminist slogan t-shirts down the runway or using plus size models in your shows when it's just something that represents 
what's happening in society normally anyway. Do you think that in some ways the fashion industry is out of touch? Yeah, it, it does. You know, for me, I've always said, you know, um, women uh, have been the biggest influence um, in my career, my in, like what I do, whether it's designing or whether it's just my life in itself. And um, so when I put down slogan tees or when I talk about this, these are not political issues, they are human issues that are that should be the norm and that should be the part of the conversation. I feel you and I, we should be able to talk about, oh my God, we love this collection, we love that dress or we love these earrings and also talk about the issues that's happening, plaguing our world, good and bad. And I think, why should one be mutually exclusive from the other, you know? I just don't see it. I'm the kind of person who loves fashion. I love everything about it. I am like in, engrossed in it and I also am in, fully interested in politics, music, books, literature, art and everything. So like, why shouldn't I be representing that on a runway? You know what I mean? Yeah. You've broken many barriers with your work. Are there any barriers still to break? Oh my God, so many more. You know, what I s started out um, to do just to become a fashion designer and, and you know, make a living doing what I love, it has allowed me to create an audience and a platform where I can talk about issues that are important to me and important to women, important to minorities who are my friends. And by just, you know, living my truth and my integrity, I've been able to, as you said, break some barriers. Um, I hope I continue to do so. I hope I, what I want to do is I hope through my work, I'm able to represent all the ones, all the people that are not represented in a popular culture. I hope I'm able to tell that story. And that's what I'm interested in because I'm, that's the story that I'm curious about. That's the story that when you hear about the ones who are silent, but unrepresented, when you hear this story, it really tells the story of each of our soul. And that to me is what is compelling. And that to me is what I hope and continue to do. Pravel, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this time. And enjoy the rest of F1 weekend. Yes, I shall. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow Harper's Bazaar Arabia on YouTube and I'll see you again next time.